Welcome back to the Nasty Graham RPG Podcast. This is the Boston Masquerade, Chapter 12, Queen of the Damned. Hey, this is Jake, and I'm getting a lot of targeted ads for the Hummer EV. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Matt playing Javi Morales, the Ventru Cleaner. Hey, everyone. Dan here playing Quintus Lazar, the Tremere. And uh, topping the frenzy chart uh, roll off. <laughs> hey guys, it's John. I'm playing uh, Z, the Bruja um, uh, tank turret. <laughs> uh, hi, it's Ryan. Uh, I play Ethan Crane, and uh, you can't spell Ventrue without the E. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, I'm playing Larry Murphy. I got a bad case of fleas. <laughs> <laughs> how's, how's Johnny doing? Is he all right? Johnny is good. He's, okay. he's yeah. you'll see him sitting in my lap, licking blood off. My he has face. a flea oh. collar. Yeah. You have a flea collar on. Yes. Him? Yeah, yeah. Do you? You should get one for yourself too. <laughs> Devin, how's the snack shack doing? It's a snack shack. Snack shack is rocking and rolling. I also want to give a little fun fact. Tums can also be taken as a calcium supplement. Two tablets twice a day is fifty percent of your daily value of calcium. Facts. Are we okay, the fact for, check. For, for, for <laughs> snack check facts? And I'm just gonna really firm up those poops. And now we had the thumbs ad. Yep. All right. So new segment: <laughs> snack shack facts. <laughs> Devin got a couple rolls of thumbs. I got a Hummer AV. <laughs> <laughs> I take Devin's prize over yours. <laughs> Hit it. All right. All right. Everyone's here for the kin chat this week. This is great. Okay. Uh, cool, cool. So here's where we start. It was sundown. We're in a cabin deep in Maine, and there were werewolves outside. But there was one thing that they weren't counting on. E-crane. When the third guy came with the chainsaw, we made a break for it. Uh, uh, Larry had some bats going on. I don't know if they really kind of... It, it, they, they were they were cool. It was cool to have bats there. Um, and then uh, one of the werewolves kind of plowed through me, but we all got into got into the Hummer uh, and uh, set watch the freedom mode going. And uh, zoom, we were gone. Well, I, th- I thought we were gone, but uh, two of them were were like about a car length behind us at first. One yeah, jumped on the side there, but uh, Javi Z and uh, and Larry lit it up pretty good. Larry got that that uh, silver dagger in there, and then. Uh, is is fangs a little bit too, and was just kind of just sucking werewolf blood for a long while. Ooh, it's thirsty. Um, he shook that guy off, and the other one was coming up on the side. So I uh, did a maneuver. I uh, zigged and zagged, went through the woods, did a little little, little tree slalom, you know. But uh, a <laughs> hey, e crane could take it. Next thing you know, we were uh, on ninety three for our rendezvous. Uh, any questions? No, great. Um, so if anyone here knows uh, where I can find a high quality body shop, really reliable, uh, just let me know. Um, probably have, uh, oh, I'd say, at least thirty thousand dollars in damage to cover. But uh, thank you all and good night. November third, seven p.m. In the age of next day delivery and Amazon Prime, the White Pines Mall is dead yet it still persists. It looks the way you remember it from your childhood, a long hallway of tiled floors and plastic plants, bright pastel greens with splashes of fuchsia, storefronts closed off by metal gates and store windows displaying clothes that have long gone out of style. At the entrance to Cinema 360, we see the poster advertising Queen of the Damned. Red spray paint across the wall above it reads, Off With Her Head. Coming from the theater hallway, we hear a crowd of voices arguing and shouting. Inside the theater, a crowd is shouting over each other, each individual trying to be heard. They're a mix of hulking bikers, young punks, gang members, and hardy country folk. Suddenly, 
Everyone's attention is drawn to a solitary figure standing in front of the movie screen. Without a gesture or a word, she silences the crowd. Mary is tall and so thin she appears fragile. Her once golden brown skin looks ashen and sickly, with dark circles under her eyes. She has long black hair streaked with gray, bunched into dreadlocks in a bun above her head. As the crowd's eyes fall on her in silence, she begins to speak. We have visitors. Earlier that night, the banged up Hummer is being escorted into the mall parking lot of the White Pines Mall. You're all kind of in shock after what just happened. Looking around to your left, to your right, in front, behind are dozens of vampires, most of which you have never seen before. Anyone want to talk before you get to this meeting? <laughs> uh, I think Larry's sitting in the back and, and Johnny is on his lap and he's just lapping away. There's blood all over Larry's face and <laughs> down his chest. I guess in the silence as... as well, I don't know if we have... I guess we don't have adrenaline. <laughs> but as we kind of come back from our own sort of blood rousing. Uh, that reminds me, Josh. Uh, I... I would like you with your werewolf blood that you're high on. I told you you get a bonus on animalism powers. Um, I'm also going to give you two other things temporarily until the blood is out of your system. One point of strength and Ooh. minus two dice on any rage um, frenzy rolls. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You are high on adrenaline. <laughs> oh, werewolf adrenaline. The adrenaline of an animal that was chasing down prey. <laughs> what, what is like, is does Larry typically wear like a like Canadian tuxedo sort of thing going on? Either or? Canadian tuxedo or like uh, kind of Carhartt coveralls. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. a utility yeah. kind of thing. Um, I think he went Canadian tuxedo in this situation. Yeah. You're going to Maine, of course. Yeah. Which is sadly going to be hard to get those blood stains out of. <laughs> I got you. Bo- I can take the blood. Z, do you want to tell us what we're walking into? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, the Baron, uh, this is kind of, this is, it's going to be like the Elysium. Um, it's called a rant. They have their own name for it. The rant. He kind of shakes his head. But, um, yeah, they're going to, I don't know. Ask us questions. Um, Are we safe? Yeah, you're with me. I, I got a suit in the back. Should I change before we go out? Or mm, they're not they're not really a suit kind of group here. Uh, I think you look fine. Um, uh, I I like yeah. So uh, it's Mary, right? Is the Baron? Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Mary. Um. Yeah, she's the Baron. Uh, she's the one with the baseball bat. Um. We'll we'll be safe. You're with me. I mean, we took care of a hunter, so what more could they ask for, right? See? In their backyard, no less, huh? Yeah. Everybody has their own motivations, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, They might ask for information. I don't know. To be honest, I don't know what they're going to ask. But we'll we'll be safe. Don't worry. Um, as, As he says that, Larry finishes cleaning the blood off the silver little dagger and, and hands it back to Ethan. Reaches in the back and he produces that other blade and he sticks it into his through his belt and pulls his jacket back around it. The one that uh <clears throat> the, the one that we found from the hunter dude. Yep. You uh, have the information it is safe? Yeah. Uh yeah, I got on a hard drive. Um yeah, and the other thing, look, uh, I'll come clean, right? <clears throat> I'm a bruja, and uh, my sire, he's the jackal. He's uh, he's an anarch. Okay. I've been in the Camarilla since inception, really, and uh, yeah, we're we're trying to change things, you know, like a Soviet agent. A, a what now? It's the movie Red Donna. 
Oh shit! With uh, with Swayze, nice. Something like that. Y- yeah, something like that. Um, yeah. So what is it they want? Well, they want I don't know what me and the jackal and what the group we were working with. We want a change. The Anarchs, they're stuck up here. And uh, Fiona doesn't even let Thin Bloods live in Boston. They're kindred too. But uh, they're all either exiled or killed. You know? See, you, uh, Quintus looks kind of somewhat anxious. Would they seek to, to weaponize this? What we came here for? Yeah. Probably. That is only acceptable. See? Yeah, no. I, I'm not going to tell them. Not until we figure out what's going on. We don't even know what's going on. We do not. And we must find the cure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it affects Anarchs, too. So, our story, we must have it straight. Or oh, we came here uh, to understand uh, as a favor to... Um, sorry, uh keep wanting to call him King Huxley but it's Kingsley (laughs) to uh, Mr. Burke and uh, that is why we are here yeah yeah that'll be the story we're we're there on a mission as a a favor that's it that's all they need to know you are comfortable with this yeah Quintus is kind of really trying to measure uh, Z at the moment um, and get a sense that, you know, he is, I know that he's nervous, but that he's not trying to play us. Would you let one of us hold that? Sure. Yeah. Here, Larry. Larry shrugs and says, I know you could fool me. Anything could be on this. I don't know. But consider it a gesture of trust. It is also a trust in you, Larry. I know this uh, matter affects you personally, and uh, it is close to you. Yeah, he actually, uh, Z hands you two hard drives. The the original hard drive that came from the the recording camera, and then another one that he copied it to. I won't do anything with these until we talk together about what to do. Yeah. This is good. We have uh, much to discuss, all of us. Larry mm-hmm. tucks them into like a inside pocket on his jacket. And you're brought inside. Come on, Johnny. Stay close to me. Inside Cinema 360, where Queen of the Dam was being played many years ago when the mall closed. But now we see dozens of kindred arguing, fighting, as this woman stands in front of them and says, we have visitors. Mary would be played by Lisa Bonet. Peter fucking Frampton. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you Googling Lisa Bonet? No. Oh, okay. No one knows what Lisa Bonet looks like. She looks towards the side of the stage and gestures for all of you to come up on the stage. Javier, you know Mary. Before the Bruja were expelled, chose to leave, whatever it was, before they were no longer part of the Camarilla, Mary was the primogen of the Bruja clan. You knew her for several years. Probably did some work for her when she was in the city. It was about ten years ago that her clan officially split from the Camarilla and she and most other Bruja declared themselves unaligned. You said 10 years ago? Yeah. Okay. So they were with us when we took the city She was. The Camarilla. Yeah, yeah. There's a few other faces here that you might recognize as well. John, do you think Jackal would be one of those? Do you think Javier knew Jackal? I don't think he maybe registered at that time. He's probably okay. a bit lower on the totem pole. Maybe you recognize him, but you don't remember what his name was. Yes. Yeah. Word. Can you remind me what Jackal looks like as he 
is on the side of the stage as well. By myself. The, the dude from fucking uh, Hackers. The, mm-hmm. um, yeah. What's his name? Matthew Lillard? Yeah. No, no the, the, um, the bad oh, guy. Oh, oh he's the bad guy. guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's the dude from uh, Fisher Stevens. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. I say Matthew Lillard <laughs> is, is actually a D and D player, so we, we throw that name around at some point. Yeah. Maybe get uh, him. Can we get Matthew Lillard? <laughs> <laughs> we can try. But the bad guy from Hackers. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, he has, he has fantastic. Like, the He's goatee, got the little long hair, yeah, like, like kind of greasy, balding, yeah, long, greasy. balding but also long. Yeah, 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 like balding on the sides. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that that like goatee, nineties goatee. Yep. Yeah. Larry gets his satchel out. And lets Johnny get up in the satchel. He's okay. He's definitely on the the defense. Yeah. The room was was silenced, and everyone is just sort of looking at all of you. And she says, "Come on out here." Z kind of leads them onto the stage. They don't know how it works outside the Camarilla. You see, where they're from, the queen just makes a, a ruling brings down an edict, decides everyone's fate. It doesn't work that way here. We decide things collectively. And what we all want to know is why the Camarilla lapdogs have come so far north. Larry leans over to Quintus and very quietly says, it is like the Soviets. (laughs) (laughs) Quintus, like, <laughs> the smallest quirk of his mouth. And then he, like, kind of turns back to the crowd. Javi's going to look at yeah. Z after the question's asked with yeah. his one eye. So, uh, <laughs> we came up north to track down a hunter as a favor. Someone from the crowd says, a favor to who? Well, I would say a friend to all kindred. To some extent. Kingsley Burke. Do you think Kingsley has any infamy, Josh? Among kindred? I I think some, especially anyone that has been politically connected. So, like, definitely Mary. Anybody that had influence in the Sabbat or the Camarilla. You don't... There's but, but, not much of a reaction from the crowd, yeah. but... Nobody, nobody low, really. He's, yeah. He works in the shadows, so only... I think only power players would kind of anyone be. with a couple dots of insight notices that Mary looks towards someone else on the side of the stage and they kind of share a glance of recognition at that name. Uh, I have three points in insight. Do I notice who you, she's looking at? Yeah, I'm just gonna it's uh, Jackal. Yeah, probably just uh-huh. gonna take a mental note. Yeah, I was surprised I have insight. <laughs> 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 Um, I don't know if that's an Z, oversight, but... Z says, <clears throat> this hunter was a uh, <clears throat> former first light. Got kicked out because he was uh, well, a little too into it. But he had some dirt on Kingsley, and he wanted it gone. So we made it gone. Oh, yeah, we made him gone, too. So you're welcome, I guess. What was the dirt? That I can't give you. I want to hear from the rest of them, not just you, Z. We know you. Yeah. You don't need to stand up here with them. But I will. She looks at Javier. I remember you, the cleaner. See? Not exactly your sort of thing coming up into the mountains and fighting werewolves. No, but I remember a time when... Being up here in the woods wasn't your thing, huh? Necessity. See? Necessity. So what brings the Ventru out here? On a personal mission for someone who I'm not even sure is Camarilla. See, it has been a long time since I've seen you in the city. But there are things that happen that affect us. Especially when someone so dangerous is just sitting in your backyard, huh? How many more up here? I hear the stories. I watch the fucking Fox News (laughs) with all their little camps, proud boys, whatever the fuck they want to call themselves. Hey, I really enjoy these woods. How you enjoy them up here? 
Matt, why don't you give me a roll of um, persuasion and charisma? What do you think? Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, that is three successes. Okay. Someone in the crowd says, he's right. Why aren't we doing anything about them? Hmm. That's a good question, huh? How many you lost up here? It's not just hunters we have to worry about. It's our own kind. Your queen doesn't even let most of these kindred exist. She considers thin bloods less than vampires. We also have the werewolves to the north. Hmm. See, we took care of a couple of those too, huh? But why you? And why are you working for Kingsley Burke? Mm. Last I heard... She says to the crowd, last I heard, he was Sabat. <laughs> last we heard, too. <laughs> oh, well, like I said before, it's been a long time since you've been in the city. Things change. Politics and all. Yeah, Poppy, uh, Burke didn't seem like the kind of guy who sticks with one crowd for too long. <laughs> See, he's uh, a little like the wind, huh? Yeah. Blows different directions, whatever suits his fancy. You're trying to tell me that <coughs> he sent you here out of the goodness of his own heart. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> no. You should know better than that, huh? Matt, why don't you give me another roll? This one's going to be an opposed check. Yikes, stripes. Same? Yep. You don't have any presents, do you? Uh, I do. I have one in presents. Is um, it still amplified? Because you I, haven't fed. I was going to say, I do oh, have shit. plus two in sanguine for presents. Um, yep. What is that power, that presence power? Uh, it's awe. Awe, which is one the one target one? Yes. Um, add two dice to this roll for the sanguine blood. It's large dice pools on both sides. Yeah, so. right? Wow. Yeah. The Italian Camarilla calls it sanguini. <laughs> <laughs> that is six successes. Holy shit. She got five. That's without a crit, too. Yo. Yeah. 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 Yeesh. Wow. You're kind of having this back and forth with her. The, the Unlike a Camarilla meeting, the crowd is very vocal. It is an active audience, and they're shouting things out here and there. But more of them seem to be siding with you than with her. And again, anyone who has a, a decent insight, she's angry. She's physically showing it uh, to some extent. She is a bruja. So it's a little easier to anger them. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <clears throat> um, but she's basically trying to say that you're some sort of Camarilla lapdog, some sort of may maybe unknowingly working for the Sabat, and, and you're kind of rebuttaling her. And also, Javier has this sort of like calm demeanor that is is so against the way that that she sort of is like her like kind of boiled blood like you know fervorous bruja nature and it seems to be annoying her <laughs> um <laughs> but it it seems to be convincing a, a good amount of the crowd <clears throat> um finally jackal kind of walks out and he says you all know most of you know z and he vouches for the four of them. That should be enough. We don't need whatever this is. And she says, this is our way. The Camarilla kicked us out of their city. Why should we just let them come up here and do as they wish? Does, is there like a, does Javi know if they were actually kicked out or if it was sort of a mutual separation? Um, some of them were definitely kicked out. Um, a lot of them left willingly. Um, the entire Bruja clan was kicked out. The Gangrel clan were given the option to stay. The only one that stayed was Alexander. Thinbloods, your understanding. Um, Thinbloods being like, you know, vampires who are so far removed in the, the bloodline that they're like, they're not quite fully vampires. Some of them can even walk around during the day. Uh, but they were, they were um, kind of like systematically pushed out of the city in a way. 
<clears throat> I think that's probably your your um Ryan. Yeah. You got a couple flaws in the back of your character sheet we haven't explored. What are they? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, uh let's see. I have a despised and enemy. Who do you think the enemy is? Do uh, you think do you have an idea for the, that? Well, the enemy was based off of my uh my feeding uh oh, yeah, okay. my rare fry right. taste. I um, think that the despised yep. might be some Thin of bl- these lower yeah. <laughs> thin bloods. Yeah. I think that you probably pay, played a part in buying up or making sure certain people bought up certain real estate, that, gentrified yeah. certain neighborhoods. I, gen- <laughs> I gentrified the thin bloods. Nice. You gentrified right. them right out of yeah. the city. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you actually hear someone in the crowd say, I know the other one. He's a Ventru too. Oh, this isn't going to be good, Poppy. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, me hold on. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> no, no. This guy comes forward. Um, he he looks like this like kind of big biker dude. And he says, "You bought my bar, turn it into condos." R- respectfully, yes. And yes, I, I heard did. that the queen told you to do it. Yeah, that's uh, that's exactly what happened. He swings at you. Okay. <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> do you want to make up? Um, uh, you know what? I what have, are you doing? Um, I have rapid reflexes, so I'm going to just... Uh, this, I've still already... I'm going to... Uh, You're going to try to yeah. dodge it? Yeah. Um, rouse the blood. Yep. And then roll dexterity, celerity, and there's a dodge skill, right? I'm looking at this character sheet. I thought there was. Do you just roll brawl? The, there is no longer a dodge. Or do you roll... A, I'll let you roll athletics. Big gym guy? <laughs> Ethan, oh yeah, CrossFit, obviously, yeah, a hundred percent CrossFit. Do I get? Uh, yeah, I do have a specialty in CrossFit. Do I have- <laughs> <laughs> he really does. Yeah, I mean, he's not kidding. I I don't get anything for that though because uh, I got I did get five successes though. Five, Damn. yeah, that's enough to avoid his punch. Yeah. How do how did how does this happen? He he swings at you, big ham fisted, pretty slow but powerful swing. I just I just lean to the left, like it's fa- <laughs> like fast, but it's, yeah, okay. Uh, a couple other guys grab him and kind of pull him away. <clears throat> hey, you know, I deserve that, man. I respect you. Um, Z says, I was, I was, you know, I was doing what my boss told me, and I did you wrong, and I'm sorry for that, dude. Z says, look, we're all under the boot of the prince, and if he didn't play ball, he'd be up here or dead. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to let the coterie up here without making sure that we respect the the grounds. We're not going to come the mission that we had it, it was killing a hunter. I mean what more beneficial thing could you think we could be doing? You think I'm going to bring them up here stomp around Manchester make a scene and leave? No. It was my idea. I pushed for this plan. All right. An elegant argument. But you didn't ask, did you? What happens if we go into Boston? You're fi- if you're found, <laughs> you're uh, forced out, blood hunt. Depends on how, uh, how thin your blood is. Quintus has been like looking at his feet the whole time, trying to be as innocuous as possible. Mm-hmm. And... He kind of pipes up now and he says, um, uh, don't you want to be different than them? The room kind of gets quiet when you say that. She looks towards the crowd and says, she says, what do we want? People start shouting all sorts of different things. (laughs) (laughs) But the overwhelming thing that you hear is that they want to be left alone. They don't want to be told what to do. They don't want a queen who can decide who lives or dies. So then is this not a good arrangement for you all? You're up here. You get to make your own decisions. You get to let whatever grows in these woods become more powerful. It's safe for you, huh? Would you be so willing to just walk away from everything that you've built at Kin? He told us all about it. Hmm. It sounds quite nice. A lot of people here had homes in the city 
or nearby, businesses, family. We can do whatever we want as long as we give up our old lives, right? It's like telling someone in a war-torn country, sure, just leave your life behind. See? Is it, it is? I mean, that's, that's kind of like, that's kind of the arrangement we all made when we, you know, changed, right, though? And I'm, I'm sorry you had to make it a second time. That's not fair for all of you. Jackal says, no, this is different. We gave up our mortal lives, but this is change that was forced upon us. She says, do any oppose letting them go? There's a few murmurs, but no one outright says so. She looks at Quintus and she says, you're right, we're not like her. We don't just decide who lives and dies. But ask yourself, Javier, does it really seem right that we should be forced out of our homes? No. No, it's not, but every life I live, there's rules, no? You have them up here, see? Maybe not as strict, but the rules say everybody has a voice. There will come a time when you're on the other side of your queen's rules, and then we'll see how much you like them. Oh. And I suppose when that day comes, she says, you'll be welcome here with us. It's, uh, it's, it's probably not too far off, Poppy. <laughs> <laughs> Mijo, this already happened. No? <laughs> off with her head. <laughs> <laughs> the difference is for me, is I see a path where we can make our own rules. How long have you been around, huh? For me, it's a hundred years. It's a long time. You know how many leaders I've seen come and go? Things have changed great in my time, huh? For you, just a little. I see a time where we make our own rules. I see a time where maybe there's more voices, huh? <laughs> she looks towards Jackal and she says, you might have picked the wrong kindred to have as a spy in the Camarilla. This one might do just as well. <laughs> maybe we have more in common than I thought, Mr. Morales. When that time comes... Or perhaps if you need help ushering it in, you know where to find me. See you in that bat. I remember what that did at the time. <laughs> Have a good night, gentlemen. Have a safe trip home. Jackal, you'll see him out, right? People start leaving the theater. She leaves. Z breathes out. She's all show. She wasn't they weren't going to do anything. I know. You know that. I know. Jake, about how many people were there, vampires? 30. Wow. So like twice the number of Boston. Um, Not quite twice, but but more. Um, And a lot of them are thin bloods. Sure. Yeah. So they're basically a step above a ghoul, a step below a vampire. Yep. So yeah, those are your people, twice. huh? Yeah. For <laughs> the most part. Although I don't claim all of them. It's okay. Some we of them are assholes. Yeah, you know, you, you could say the same about uh, about Boston. So, I mean, most of them are assholes. Yeah, uh, same. Present company excluded. But so we have uh, passed the test. Yeah, Jackal is still standing there. Yep. I will say, Z, I am uh, a little disappointed. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I understand. Loyalties and all. Yeah. Well, I didn't know if I could trust all of you. Hmm. It's still the same for me. I know. Uh, we will need to discuss what this uh, means, no? Yeah. Jackal's still standing there. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I say it pretty openly because I, I'm looking between the two of them and us. I did uh, not mean to 
uh, be a part of this uh, political uh, affiliation in, in Boston. Jekyll says, you're a vampire. That means you're involved. I am a scientist. What he means is uh, <laughs> involved in my plot. Scientists. They're the most involved in politics. Come on. Look at everything that's happened in the last few years. Fuck, the last few hundred years. Politics involves itself with science. It is not the other way around. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what order it comes in. Quintus kind of begrudgingly nods his head. <laughs> Whatever the case, uh, I kind of look at Javi. Oh, we need to be getting back to Boston. Yeah. Javier. Si. Si. I met you at an Elysium a long time ago. My name is Jackal. See, I thought you looked familiar. I'm Z Sire. A buenas noches. Not bad in there. Held your own at your first rant. Hmm. It's not as intimidating as an Elysium. I don't think, uh, and I could be wrong, but I don't think she can call a blood hunt, so. <laughs> what do I got to fear, huh? Well, probably a lot more fists get thrown at these things than at the typical Elysium. But at the end of the day, if you want to call something similar to a blood hunt, you pretty much need the whole crowd on your side. Hmm. And we didn't do anything wrong. Exactly. She didn't have anything. She was all, all bark, no bite. Misdemeanor trespass, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> had a couple of those, Ethan? Yeah. She just wanted to make sure everyone knows whose territory it is. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still a little confused about that, though, huh? She's in charge, but everybody has a voice, no? So? She's not really in charge. Exactly. Yeah. Um, That's the problem, right? We don't really have a clear leader. Fuck, we don't even have a clear purpose. You heard what they said when she asked what we wanted. You are left alone as long as they allow you to be left alone. Sooner or later... Werewolves or Camarilla, someone's going to come knocking. So you are not uh, united? There's factions. There's people with agendas, just like Camarilla. But, uh... My mind flashes that video image of Mr. Boyle yeah. in the security camera footage. But not everyone's united in the Camarilla now, are they? We need a real leader, a real vision. Yeah. Everyone roll insight and wits. John, you don't have to roll. Okay. <laughs> you John, know what he's... <laughs> <laughs> you notice he actually... He glances towards Javier when he says that to yeah. you. Yeah. <clears throat> Does a specialty in motives? Apply? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. That's insight and wits. Five successes Correct, yeah. with a one on the hunger die. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled six dice. <laughs> Well, it's still a, it's still a success. Yeah, yeah the, the one, one doesn't. The matter. one only matters if you fail. Oh, thank yeah. God! Yeah, you're better with a one than a zero. On yeah, six, yeah, fair. As long as you're... Three successes. I had one. One. Um, this is the thing I'm doing. It's a messy critical. <laughs> 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 three, three successes. Uh, how do you have three if it's a messy critical? Should be at least... you, you only need what ten on the hunger die, right? You need two. two. It needs oh, to be a crit. Two tens. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. yep. Um, then so it's just three. Just three. Yeah. All right. Javier, you're the only one that notices that. I'm, I'm more looking besides, around at the... Uh, we're, yeah. we're at the mall, right? Correct. And you're walking out. Um, hey, uh, Jackal? Hmm. Um, I mean, this, this might seem... Who, who, who like, owns this property? <laughs> um, one of us. One I'm of not us? sure. All right, cool. We make sure it doesn't get demolished, you know? I mean, do you, do you guys like it the <laughs> way it is? Or? Be easy. <laughs> <laughs> he looks around and he says... I think we keep it this way on purpose. All right, cool. Sort of a metaphor. He keeps walking. They don't need no more fucking Planet Fitness up there. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, though. Oh, shit. Like Everywhere a- you go, there's a fucking strip mall, another Planet Fitness, another Petco. We're not talking strip mall. We're talking, like, mixed commercial residential <laughs> condos, man. That, that kind of talk is going to get you punched again. And that's respectfully. That's why I'm asking you. <laughs> He brings you out to the parking lot. What next? We gotta head back to Boston. 
Seems like all of you have a lot to talk about. Yeah. See, we have some problems we gotta fix. Hmm. Be in touch. Will do. He leaves you at the at E Crane. E Crane has some damage. <laughs> back wind the back window has been shot out with a shotgun. All right, all right. There's claw marks across the roof. One of the doors has a hole in it. Where uh, give me a loud ride home. Where the other uh, claw was punctured. It's blood punctured all the over side. the sides. It's, it's probably going to be like so person, much per, blood on the on you the hit moose. Yeah. Yeah. You hit a moose. Personal experience. It's probably going to be a couple months until I can get this to a body shop. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. Probably needs a charge. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yep. And you guys head back to the city. Yeah. Yep. All right. As we're driving. Mm-hmm. Larry hasn't said shit. Um, and he uh, he says to Z, can can I watch that video again? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Here. He, he puts his hand he up. Hands the hard drive over. Yeah. Plugs it into his laptop and starts playing it. Yeah, I kind of arranged them so that they're in order. Uh, you go from here to here and you'll, you'll, you'll follow the whole thing. He slides his laptop around. He looks down at it, like he he slides it back around, presses play, and then slides it. <laughs> um, yeah, he'll he'll get a little bit of function of the controls. He's gonna watch it like over and over the whole ride. <laughs> um, he is focused on Mister Boyle, and like when when he gets to Sydney, you know, there's no audio on it. I assume, right? Right. Um studying like their interaction just from like body language and does she hug him right or or does she how how does she react to him how does like he treat her and and just anything I mean I know I know him probably than more Mm -hmm. than any other vampire and I'm just trying to see if I can read anything from watching this over and over Uh, that would give me a clue as to it looks like a short conversation when he first encounters her she looks tired like she's You know, like she's been in captivity and starved and tortured. Sort of maybe confused about what's going on. They have a pretty short interaction. And then he leads her out of there. You get the feeling watching this over and over that they had never met before this. Uh, This whole time that um, Larry's watching this video, Javi is just staring at Larry. He's trying to get a read on how he feels about this video. If there's anger or confusion or jealousy or... I think Larry's kind of an open book, right? Um, (laughs) What do you think? I think, actually, he's relatively hard to read. Mm That's kind of how he has very little subterfuge, but he has a lot of composure and resolve, and I Mm -hmm. picture it as just like he comes off very kind of impassive. One note, yeah. right? I do think that uh, Javier probably senses a little bit of anger, whether or not that's intentional. You might not be aware that it's from the blood. Yeah. <laughs> necessarily. Yeah. Anger, um, confusion, but just really like a betrayal, some more of a... a well, a, why don't you go ahead and roll insight and... Um, it's going to... I also think it's kind of interesting. Why don't you roll insight and composure you can for me? Draw some conclusions by the fact that he keeps replaying it over and over uh-huh. and over again. Yeah, it's only two successes. Uh, okay, I mean, I, I guess whatever, what would whatever Josh wants to tell you. Come off the most is just a a confusion and a desire to understand. Um, pr- probably some agitation. A lot of that probably comes from the blood. But he he hasn't even like he hasn't processed it because he doesn't it was so out of his expectation and he's trying to understand the thought process and how it fits in with everything else they know and I think he's probably also envisioning how he would talk to Mr. Boyle about it so he he's very internal okay Z kind of looks back. Um <clears throat> from the passenger uh, chair and says, uh, Hey, Avi, uh, <laughs> if you have them call a blood hunt, you'll give me a heads up, right? Hmm. See, I do what I can to make uh, 
make that not a thing. I got some favors I could call for you. For any of you in this fucking car, I want you to know. Look, uh, I don't need you. Or, well, I do need you, but I don't want you to stick your neck out for me. I know I, I lied to you guys, but it was only in service of what we're trying to do. And what we're trying to do is, I don't know. We're trying to bring them together, bring everyone together. Make it so that we're not under the heel of Fiona, who wants to just murder, is, is okay with hundreds of civilians dying if it means we don't get involved. We know about it. We can do something about it. See? See? It's uh, something you need to keep in mind, though. We are not them anymore. It's different. I know. That's why I came out and told you. No, I mean us and their food. The humans. You're not one of them anymore. You need to remember that. I know. I, but I mean, you have to draw a line somewhere. Where that line lays is different for all of us, I understand. But you have to remember, it is us versus them. Maybe. No, no, no. No, maybe. You remember that man in the forest, huh? Yeah. Javi will open up his shirt. He stick this dagger in me. He burn this eye out of my fucking face. We are different from them. You have to remember that. Yeah. And we're different from the Thin Bloods. And we're different from Anarchs and the Sabbat. See? And I am different from you. And Larry is different from me. All of us. We have our strengths and weaknesses, even the thin blood. Right. But you know what I'm saying? This can't keep going on the way it's going on. Something has to change. You know? See? And I'm just a small part. I'm just playing my part. But uh, if you don't want me around or you want to turn me in, that's on you. That's up to you. No. We are a family. This quarter, we make decisions as a family. Mijo? Poppy? You're, you're sailing on the kinship now, Z. <laughs> <laughs> For better or worse, man. Larry's what? been kind of tuned out. He closes the laptop and yeah. passes it to Z. Looks up, sees the distant skyline of Boston and says, almost like he hadn't really been paying attention to what you're talking about. What do you want to do about this? We need to talk to him, right? I mean, we can't go up against him. He's Mr. Boyle. He... I, I think the yeah. bigger question, Larry, is what do you want to do? I want to know why he did it. See? And understand how it fits in with everything else. Sydney. And the prince, what happened to Sergei? Is this his aim? Or is it side effect? Was he just trying to take her out? I don't think they knew each other from watching this. If I had to guess, I, as much as I don't want it to be the case, I think that what he wanted is not her, but what's in her blood. You think that uh, Mr. Boyle, he, he knew this thing. He was not simply ordered to fetch her. He, he shrugs. He says, I don't know that, but I don't think Mr. Boyle would have done this if he didn't have a motivation of his own. Yeah. So, I mean, Larry, if that's what you believe, bud... I think the real question is how he knew. Mr. Boyle knows more than most in the city. Maybe as much as anyone. He has ears and eyes everywhere. Yeah, you all know the reputation of the Nosferatu. They are the spy masters. They, they tend to learn lots of things. I... 
in a way, I want to speak to him alone. I think maybe he would be more willing to give the truth. I think if we all come to him, it will feel more of a threat. But I know that this is not my decision to make on my own. We all came here together, even those who didn't want to put ourselves in harm's way. We did this as a family, See? so we should do what's next that way. I think uh, it is important as a uh, This is a moment for all of us that uh, I am open with you as well because Mr. Boyle's actions have uh, affected me. I am infected. What? When when did this happen? The only moment I can think is in that nightclub. The first night that we were asked to investigate. Oh, shit. Sergei's blood. Yes, Larry. Sergey's blood. Until I knew how to trace it, uh, it was unknown to me. And only in the last 24 to 48 hours have I begun to feel its effects. Well, there, there is a way, we know, because of Sydney. There has to be a way or, or she would not be able to sustain didn't you say blood of kindred Quintus is nodding yes but it uh, must be a specific kind it must be elder blood elder to your relative uh, age well, what about Javi he's, he's older it uh, does not quite work with like that uh, it is hard to understand I do not understand <laughs> it myself you Probably aren't sure. Yep. You know what I mean? You don't know, but like just walking around. There are qualities in the blood of certain vampires, most of which seem to be older. Uh, it has changed across the spectrum. You need a certain metachlorian count. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, he's, Quintus says, but um, there is a, uh, a virility or a potency that can supersede uh, the qualities of the virus, at least temporarily. But um, as I explained earlier, it would, uh, whatever source that blood came from, would begin to uh, create the the blood bond. Oh, better than going crazy and killing people. The the crazy and uh, the insanity and the madness is from starvation. So that's what happened. He drained those girls and wasn't sated. Yes, and... Uh, Mr. And Boyle's blood would work. <laughs> Mr. Boyle's blood would work, and Lydia Marlowe's or Burke's. Or Alexander. Or Alexander. Me? Or Leonidas. There are a number of possible resources. At the moment, we have been engaged with and worked with <clears throat> Lydia Marlowe and Mr. Burke. Uh, we have unfinished business with them. He kind of glances back at the bomb case that's in the <laughs> back of the Hummer. <clears throat> and while I am not in a position of power, uh, she did attack and held captive a close friend of mine. It is perhaps a a thing I can use as leverage leverage to uh, ask ask for an exchange. Hmm. I think the question of who is only on you, Quintus, because you know the risks that go with it. Yes. It, uh, quite frankly, may be a matter of many. I will need to study it, and I will also need to survive myself. If um, if your issue is the blood bomb, is it not uh, better for you to talk to the primogen? Huh? Your primogen, your clan. See, they lost that, the blood bomb. 
No? This is uh, correct, as I understand it. I am <laughs> admittedly new to much of this, but um, yes, it is weakest amongst the the Tremere. Um, it would be a matter of whether or not he would choose to do so. I am not connected to this man, but um, he is uh, certainly a candidate uh, for research. I need it both for sustenance and if I am hoping to find some sort of cure, uh, I must be able to uh, run the data. Well, shit, how many days are you going to be able to go without feeding? How many weeks? Went to shrugs. I mean, we're not going to, we might not have time to convince someone like that. I could speak to Mr. Boyle tonight. Mm hmm. You could call Lydia? I could. Or Alexander. And you, I, I know you have spoken to Leonidas on more than one occasion. See? I would reach out for you. It is for me, yes. I am. I would deeply appreciate that, but also it is for kindred, yes? See? It is for us. Pero is you a sp- Number one, huh? I am only number one in the sense that uh, there are very few who know this, and there are very few who I think are prepared to do the science that is required. So, yes, in this case, it is important that I do my work. Freely. Freely. So I reach out to Leonidas for you, huh? Oui. Orle. When we get back. Should I go to Mr. Boyle tonight? Sooner the better, I guess, but we might want to get what we can get from Alexander before we talk to him, no? It may set things in motion that we are not prepared to deal with. We must uh, rest and recover some, I think, uh, before things are put uh, put in action. That is my opinion. And uh, I I could use any time in the lab uh, that I could possibly get. I can wait. I don't want to, but I understand we may need to be ready. Things might happen out of our control. See? I do think that Mr. Boyle trusts me, but... If I tell him what I know, he kind of shrugs his shoulders. <laughs> Just think that we're having this in a fucking car with a blown out window. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not like a, it. <laughs> it's like a trash bag over it. <laughs> yeah. You guys get back to Kin um, around midnight. Yeah, around midnight, a little after midnight. Place is hopping. There's a line to get in. Of which, of course, you bypass. Uh, I presume Javi's covered his face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we probably come in the back. Yeah. Uh-huh. You make your way up to that second floor. <laughs> Ethan, Dakota spots you from across the room. She's got a tray of drinks in one hand and a handful of papers. Looks like invoices in the other she hands the tray to someone and she comes over and she says, where the fuck have you been? This Look, I, I had someone not even show up. I had to put Dimitri from the kitchen on the second bar. Our fucking beer didn't get delivered, so I had to find a new beer distributor. Where have you been? Maine. <laughs> <laughs> look, I get paid three twenty five an hour. I don't run this fucking place. Plus tips. She walks out. <laughs> you want to run this place? I I've been running this place all weekend. Cool. All right. Congratulations on your promotion. Bobby <laughs> <laughs> walk right past there. <laughs> what what happened to his face? Uh it's a long story. Uh we'll talk uh uh we'll talk salary later, but can you handle those or I, I gotta get these drinks downstairs. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just have a whole side quest of <laughs> awful managerial <laughs> running a restaurant. 
And that's when Ethan hired the 22-year-old who he regularly feeds off of. <laughs> <laughs> that's nepotism if I've ever... I mean, he made it clear from, from the get-go that he was not interested in running his way. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, now you have a manager. I do. Where do you guys go once you get back to the club? What's the plan? I think we... The three priorities are talking to Mr. Boyle, yep. talking to Alexander, and getting Quintus fed. <laughs> and I think and Javi I mean well Javi can do it on his own but right yeah. Javi can kind of take care of himself yeah. mm-hmm. for the most part you just got to feed and try to I think I think Javi's going to walk to whatever like office is there and the first thing he's going to do is like put a qual- call into Leonidas okay for Quintus um yeah Z is going to um first he's going to collect up the stuff that we're supposed to give to Kingsley uh huh um, and is going to call Lydia. Okay. Um, and then after that, Alexander. Okay, we got Leonidas conversation. Lydia, you're going to also call Alexander. Yeah. Okay. And Larry, you're waiting. Um, I'm waiting to talk to Mister Boyle. I could call Alexander. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I want you to. Yeah. All right. And you're calling Leonidas. And what are you doing, Quintus? Besides waiting for everyone to call call Grubhub for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so hungry. <laughs> Actually, I, before we break up, I say, I don't know if we should talk to Alexander yet. I don't feel right hiding this from him, but I think I want to talk to Mr. Boyle before this gets anywhere else. I trust Alexander too, but we know this can put things in motion. I know maybe that isn't fair, but he is my sire. And before anyone else in the city, he was kind to me. And I want to give him a chance to explain this. Yeah, that's fine, Larry. Do you want someone else with you? No. If it comes to it, I'll make sure that he knows that others know. All right. Um, regarding Quintus, I think he goes downstairs into the subway station, mm-hmm. into his lab, and he kind of sits down heavily for a little while, for a few minutes. He looks down at the open wound in his stomach. He changes his shirt and then he goes over to the mirror and he just stares back at his reflection and kind of puts his hand to his face, kind of like moves his face a little staring at the reflection. And he thinks about waking up in front of the door and then he goes and starts flitting through the blood samples that he has to go through. Okay. Dan, why don't you give me a roll of medicine and intelligence? Sure. While you're doing that. Um, Matt, you call, you call Leonidas and after a moment of kind of starting to ask him whatever it is you're about to ask him, he says, this conversation is better to be had in person. I'll be there shortly. We'll cut to a little while later when he makes his way into your office. Uh, the third floor? If or the top floor? Wherever you want. Uh, Yeah, probably. All right. It's about 2 a.m. now. And uh, he comes in. Well, you must have a story to tell. Javi will pull off of the, pull his hood back uh, with his his burned face he's put on new clothes though so there's no hole for that knife wound um ah, see it has been quite an interesting couple of this lots of new things that come to light but mostly now let me pause you there when you you told him and Sean Clark 
about the virus. Yes. All right. All right. And and you gave them permission kind of to tell the rest of the. Yes. OK. All right. Yeah. To spread the word. Yep. To OK. Throughout. Carry the ranks. on. Um, it's about that thing I told you the other night that uh, virus. Yes. Everyone has been made aware. Bueno. There's um, hmm, kind of a immediate problem with that. Quintus, he's um, infected. Hmm. That's unfortunate. See, si? it's um from Sergey. See, si? any others? As far as we know, no. But. The biggest problem with it being him, we think he's the only one who's going to be able to fix it. And the only way to fix it right now that we can tell is uh, with your help, with you or another as powerful as you. He needs to feed enough of a regular mortal. It ain't gonna do shit. We have other options, but I figure with your clan's loss of their blood bonds, maybe it's safest if he if you help him rather than letting some of the others in the city help him, huh? If you know what I mean. I understand. When we lost the power to blood bond, there were many that saw us as an easy meal without consequences. I'll need to speak to Quintus before I allow this. Of course. We've spoken a little bit about the path, but I don't know if you've really had time to look into it. The thing I told you about, Golconda. See, I remember... I have not had time to bring it up with him. It's been a little, um... It's not his concern. It's more something I thought you may be interested in. But it's a pursuit of your humanity. <laughs> it's something that I have made my focus since... Since being freed of the responsibilities of the Chantry. I strive to make amends for the horrible things I've done. Both in my life and my own life. See, I'll speak to Quintus and if his intentions seem appropriate, then I'll help him. But if he strays from this path, path of humanity, of doing what is right, then I'll cut him off. That of is course, smart. There will be other price to pay, but that's for me to discuss with him. Well. I can perhaps offer you a little reassurance that uh, I'll take personal responsibility to make sure he stays on that path. I'll also expect to be allowed to feed here to replenish what I give to the boy. See? I'll make <clears throat> sure everything is taken care of for you, senor. I'll go speak to him then. What are they? He's... Um, in the subway. I can show you them. He nods. Goes with you. Z, what are you doing? Um, I'm going uh, out to the back office where he has his you know, computer set up. Um, like security cameras and all that. Sits down and opens his phone and calls uh, Lydia's assistant. <laughs> he answers the phone. Hello? Oh, I had his name too. <laughs> I wrote it down. Trevor. Yeah. Uh Trevor. Hey. Um we uh we got what Kingsley needs. I'll let her know. Are you bringing it over now? Yeah. Yeah, I can. Same place? Up uh, the house. All right. You're going to go out there? Yep. All right. Your motorcycle. Yeah, all the crap in my back. Pulls up the driveway. Um as you kind of collect the the box and put it on your motorcycle, or the you're just taking the hard drives, right? You're not taking the bomb. What? No, not the bomb, because it was 
just the information that yep. you wanted, right? Um, I'm going to drive the bomb <laughs> down fucking 495. <laughs> uh, Quintus um, says to you, uh, he had kind of come up to the club briefly to talk to someone who's walking back down and he sees you and he yeah, says, I like a leather jacket and a helmet on my. You are going to see Lydia. Yeah, I'm going to drop off the info for her. This is good. Um, I would perhaps recommend that uh, you could leverage this and the risks that we took uh, in exchange for perhaps uh, some of her blood that we could research. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it a go. I mean, I also have... <laughs> we have dirt on her too now. Her uh, progeny is uh, Sabat, probably. You have this and... Um, I am not uh, accustomed to this possessiveness, but um, she took a friend of mine and she took things from him. And uh, that does not sit well with me. I feel responsible for this. But the, if she donates her blood to science, uh, we can call it good. Do you have equipment for that? I do. Please wait. He kind of hurriedly walk, runs down the stairs and comes back with like essentially a phlebotomy kit. Mm -hmm. And uh, he goes, you know how to use this? Uh, no. <laughs> At least uh, use, the, Google it. <laughs> use the collection. Uh, I uh, imagine that the, between the two of you, you can figure out how to fill it. Yeah, yeah. Stick the pointy end in. Like um, a six week course, no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he hands you the kit and kind of nods to you curtly and and runs, kind of scampers down the stairs, yeah. sca stairs again. Whew. Trouble with words. Okay. Later that night, your motorcycle pulls up through the apple orchard to the front door. You make your way inside. She's there in the entryway to greet you. Um, just her. Yep. She says, did you find what you were looking for? And what Kingsley was working, looking for as well. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Why don't we, uh, mind if I come inside? Mm-hmm. Step inside and go to that little the... tea room. Yep. Here's, uh, here's the information that Kingsley wanted. He rifles in his backpack and puts it on the on the uh, little side table you'd be amazed how many of these senators are ghouls <laughs> <laughs> yeah better than viagra i bet <laughs> uh yeah and here he fiddles through his um the backpack and pulls out the phlebotomy and also puts it on a side table quintus needs um a donation for science <laughs> We did you a favor. We did your progeny a favor. We did it well. Quiet. Of course, sort of. <laughs> well, did we? I mean, it was an electric Qui vehicle. Qui quiet. <laughs> true. 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 I and believe you did that... kind of scramble the brains of Quintus's best friend. I do feel bad about that. <laughs> the virus. You heard about it, right? Everyone knows. Yeah. And I believe the term of our deal was that any information you received, you would share with us. About that. Yeah. Wondering about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So who freed her? Hmm. Let me think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. Subterfuge yeah. plus yes. manipulation roll. If that you want to lie to her, would be know. bold move, Cotton. Yeah. Bold to her face. Give her a no. fake name. Go for it. No, no, nope. uh, no. Don't. If I tell you, you can't act upon it, and no one else can know. Just you. Really repairing that trust. <laughs> I know. Well, rock and hard place. Do you want me to swear that on a Bible? Huh. I don't think that'll work on you. No, but I just want you to tell me. 
And if I tell you, you'll fill that, whatever, that blood bag there. We had a deal. Yeah, and your information about Alexander, I wasn't so great after all. I don't recall. What did I tell you? That he was the queen's lapdog. Yeah. That she had some information on him. Yeah. Did you figure out what it is yet? I don't think. No, because Larry hasn't told anybody. But it's the only thing Larry hasn't Oh, that's shared. right. That's right. No, I haven't. It's enough. But- it's enough for her to justify taking his head whenever she wants. Well, it seems like he doesn't give too much of a shit about that, now does he? He lives at the Queen's mercy, as long as he lives in Boston. Yeah. But I suppose we all do, to some extent. Yeah, I just asked Sergey. But, uh... This, uh, information... <clears throat> it's a bit pricier than that. Now you have me really interested. Fill the bag and I'll tell you. There were f- a few things I was told about the Camarilla before I joined. I was told never negotiate with a Ventru. Never rile up the Bruja. And absolutely <laughs> under no circumstances give your blood Jewish. to the Tremere. <laughs> I would think you would know me better than to think I was so foolish. Do you know what they can do with your blood? Yeah. There's no way. Hmm. And if I don't tell you the info? Then I suppose our relationship comes to an end. Is that such a bad thing? (laughs) (laughs) She's good to have on your side, though. I know. (laughs) Yeah. Well, shit. Batting zero for two here. She holds a hand up and her shadow moves across the wall and opens the door for you to leave. Yeah, I know it was on that tape. Who took that girl? It's Mr. Boyle. Alone. As far as we can tell. She smiles. She says, Larry must be heartbroken. Yeah. Cut to Larry. <laughs> um, so, do we say we're going to wait on talking to Mr. Boyle? I think we were, but... but I think it's fine. I think it's yeah. probably fine. I think it was, like, wait for the other, like, blood requests to yeah. come in, but whatever. It, like, meta-wise, it's going to be multiple days yep. for, like... Yeah, if, yeah. If we, for all that to happen. But, I mean, he wouldn't have done it without... Sure. Everybody being on board. Yeah. So if we say we kind of yep. discussed it further, yeah, yeah. then um, Larry calls you, Mr. You, Boyle. You arrange a meeting with Mr. Boyle. He meets you down at the docks. I change. He's sitting on a pier. When you go out to the end of the pier, he's he's sitting on a on a little wooden stool, and he's got a string in the water. Before we walk up, I... um. I actually, Johnny's been running around as he likes to on the streets, but I gesture to the satchel and he climbs up and in it. And I say, uh, just stay close to me this time, Johnny. Things are, hmm, might be different. As you approach him, he, he's looking into the water, looking at the string. And he says, I used to love to do this when I was a young boy. You ever fish for crabs? Not crabs, but yeah, my my uncle would take us fishing sometimes when I was a, a boy. Crabs are interesting. We just lower a chicken bone into the water, and they grab on. You can pull them right out and eat them. He starts to pull the string out of the water, and sure enough, there's a chicken bone like a, chi- a chewed up chicken wing on the end with a crab holding onto it. He says, imagine being so obsessed with your dinner that you don't realize you are dinner. <laughs> a lesson? He throws it back in the water. What can I do for you, Larry? I told you I would keep you informed of 
what we learned. Learn yeah. how is Sergey? Well, Quintus is doing his best. You know about the virus? He he asks. Wait, he's he said. You, oh, you, oh, you know he about the he virus? nods. He says everyone knows now. We learned more about where it might have come from. He actually looks at you for the first time. Larry's looking uh, down the water where the line is okay. bobbing. There was a lab. It related to some of the work that Quintus had done, but he wasn't involved. It was taken from him and used. There's an organization. Well, you taught me about them. First Light. They made this. They thought about using it everywhere. But something happened and they destroyed the program. Oh, Larry. You're so much smarter than they think you are. You taught me to hide that, Mr. Boyle. People speak more when they don't think you're clever enough to figure out what they mean. What did you learn about this laboratory? There was a vampire that was used in the program. She was taken from there. And I think that's, we know, that's what happened to Sergei. It was the young Tremere, Sydney. Larry is very, very still. What I don't understand is why, why she would be brought here. Oh, Larry, do you remember when we took the city? Yes. When you were, when you were fighting ghouls in the sewers, it was the four of us who really took the city. I made friends with the labor unions to make sure certain parts of the power grid would be cut off at the right time. Fiona infiltrated the police to make sure they would ignore phone calls from concerned neighbors. Alexander was our scout. Lydia told us where each and every haven was. We systematically cut them off and slaughtered them. If it wasn't for someone getting a warning out, the whole night might have been clean and quiet. Dan, how many successes did you get on that roll? Uh, five. You start looking at the blood and you make a breakthrough, a realization. The thing, the key, what makes the human blood so special is the resonance. It's not just emotional. There's a history in human blood instinct almost to fight against invasion not just viruses but the vampire that's why it doesn't work but there's more there's a resonance in all human blood that seems to build up over time it seems that with enough after drinking it for centuries that's when you start to feel the beckoning and the easiest way to avoid that is just not to drink human blood got it Mr. Boyle continues it was in Boston Commons that they made their last stand there must have been two dozen of them mostly young and hungry but still fighting to survive Alexander was tearing into them with teeth and claws. <laughs> Lydia snatched them up into the darkness like a monster out of a storybook. I was in the thick of it, taking heads with my sword. Fiona. Fiona was dancing. The way she moved through them, cutting them down before they could even think to scream. I knew at that moment that she would be the prince. 
not me. I knew I'd have to wait my turn. I knew I'd have to wait for her to be beckoned. John, yep. you, you leave Lydia's estate. Yep. You're heading back into the city when blue lights come on behind your motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> Do you pull over? <clears throat> no. I turn my lights off. <laughs> and I gun it. Okay. You gun it. They pursue. The beckoning never came. Years passed. Decades passed. She only grew stronger. Finally, I found out why. Because she came to me and asked for help. She asked me to find her a young Tremere. Someone she could feed on without fear of blood bond. I already knew the perfect person. <laughs> And I knew how I was going to get rid of her. Her time is up. It's too late for her. It's already taking effect. Soon there'll be a seat to fill, Larry. And why not an Osferatu? And that is where we'll start. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Wow. Circle. Well done. <laughs> Dear Lord. Love it. Amazing. That was, it. That was an awesome. Thank you for listening to the Boston Masquerade on the Nastagram RPG podcast. Now we'd love to hear more from you. Find and follow us online. We are at Nastagram RPG on Instagram and Twitter, Facebook.com slash Nastagram, or the Nastagram RPG Lounge for our community on Facebook, r slash Nastagram on Reddit, and at Nastagram 2053 on YouTube. Or just go to the website, NastagramRPG.com, and you can link out to all those sites there. If you don't mess around with any of that social media bullshit, good on you. We'd still love to hear from you. Email us at nastygrampod at gmail.com. And finally, no matter what, we would beg, implore, and plead you to rate and review us, preferably at Apple Podcasts or whatever it is they call iTunes these days. And also just talk about us. Talk about us with your friends, anybody that you think would appreciate tabletop RPGs, or just telling good stories. Thanks again, and we will see you next Tuesday. That's nasty.